Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. I thought I would try something new and start showing video as well as the traditional slides I usually do. So we'll see how that goes on this lesson. Um, in today's lesson, number 90, we'll take a look at part five of our roadmap to becoming a software architect. So in the past four lessons, we've taken a look at aspects of this roadmap. In lesson 86, I introduced the roadmap and talked about how to become prepared uh, to enter into this journey of becoming a software architect. Uh, then in 87, we developed a personal roadmap and radar. Lesson 88, we talked about technical breadth and also industry knowledge and how to start gaining and maintaining that. In the last lesson, number 89, we focused on learning about the architectural patterns. In this lesson, number 90, we're going to see about the fact of starting to focus really on trade-off analysis. Now, when we start focusing on trade-off analysis, this is one of the things an architect primarily does. They look for trade-offs everywhere. As a matter of fact, in my book that I wrote with Neil Ford, the Fundamentals of Software Architecture, um, that was in February 2020, we actually coined the first law of software architecture, which states everything in software architecture is a trade-off. So one of the aspects of starting to become a software architect is to look for and recognize these trade-offs. So I want to show you two basic uh, core techniques of how to start identifying these trade-offs to be able to have those conversations potentially with business stakeholders to find out which one's more important. And so let's take a look at one kind of technique, a pretty simple one. So in Lesson 60, I introduced microservices and GRPC, Google's Remote Procedure Call. And in there, I showed exactly the dynamics. And so if you haven't seen Lesson 60, I'm not going to repeat all that here, um, but I would encourage you to kind of look at it if you're interested in GRPC. Um, but here's the main point. Leveraging GRPC between service calls basically will give you at a minimum, a 10 times performance improvement in network latency over REST. And so if our round trip RESTful call in network latency alone takes 100 milliseconds, doing that exact same call in gRPC will take in the neighborhood of maybe five to seven milliseconds. I mean, this is, this is a breakthrough. This is wonderful. And this is the trap not to fall into. Because as a software architect, we don't get excited about the benefits of everything, but rather we look for the trade-offs because there is always a trade-off. And so, for example, here is the architect, I would say, well, that's pretty impressive, but what am I paying for? You know, what's, what's the trade-off here? And aside from increased cost, which there is because of the load balancing aspects, uh, the primary trade-off is the fact that we're tightly coupling our services together uh, due to the client and server stubs that are required in an RPC call. And so by identifying and researching what is the real trade-off or balance here, and now we can start analyzing and saying, hmm, now that I understand the trade-off, is performance more important than tight coupling? In other words, will I, am I willing to sacrifice tight coupling to get the performance? Or is loose coupling more important at the sacrifice of performance? And now we have the basis of an intelligent discussion that we can have with a business stakeholder and to be able to have them answer, well, which one's more important here? All right, so that's one example let me show you another example. Um, so let's see, we've got uh, four kinds of payment that we can do. Um, we have a Visa store card or store credit from like a return, PayPal or even a gift card. The question is this, should we have a single payment service housing all of those or separate each payment type into a separately deployed service? And so now these are the kind of decisions every architect must need to make. And so now we ask, well, how do I make this kind of choice? 
And so what we start doing is one of the ways of actually looking at trade-off analysis and identifying those trade-offs is to think about different scenarios. So let's go through a couple of scenarios here. Um, what if I wanted to add another payment type, let's say reward points, or I wanted to modify, let's say, the way we do credit card processing? In this case, to add another payment type, I simply just write the code and put it in a separately deployed unit of software, a separate service in a container. No other service needs to be modified tested or deployed. As a matter of fact, even to change the credit card processing in this first one that you see here, I simply need to apply my modifications there and re retest and deploy. So notice my testing scope is a lot smaller. And so maintenance here is really good. As opposed to the single service, my testing scope is increased. I really should test everything else, especially if I'm changing a consolidated database schema. And also, I necessarily have more deployment risk because I'm redeploying all those other payment types unnecessarily. And so when we start to analyze the scenario of either adding or updating a service, we notice that adding a new payment type or changing an existing one is a really good aspect of making things fine-grained. However, let's go through a different scenario. Because one of the problems we have here is that a customer, when they're applying a payment, can choose any or all of these payment types. And so upon checkout, what I'm necessarily going to have to do if I actually separate my services is to have, unfortunately, a payment orchestrator. And that orchestrator now has to make a remote call to separately deployed services, coordinating, coordinating all that activity in a distributed transaction. And so the point is if I've charged a credit card and you want me to divide half of it by store credit, but the store credit service is down, unfortunately now I've got some really complicated error handling to reverse the credit card charge and come back to you and say, I'm sorry, I can't apply store credit at this time. Whereas in the consolidated service, I've got transactionality and error handling. I could do a rollback and it's a lot easier to do that. So my point being here, when we take a look at applying multiple payment types to pay for an order, suddenly the individual services are not so good. And so the point is, if we kind of analyze this from learning about trade-offs, scenario-based analysis will give us and identify those trade-offs for us. In other words, adding a new payment type or changing an existing one is a really good justification for the smaller, separately deployed services. However, applying multiple payment types to pay for an order makes it more difficult. This is how you make this choice. In the trade-off analysis, which is more important? Is maintenance more important than transactionality and error handling? Or is transactionality in other words, making a single database commit or rollback transaction more important at the sacrifice of increased maintenance. And now we have the basis to be able to have and explain to a stakeholder and be able to have them make a decision. Fantastic. So that actually gives us in this lesson, number 90, uh, the check mark on focusing on trade-off analysis, just identifying finding those trade-offs, looking for scenarios or research. And those are two kind of techniques for being able to start identifying and analyzing trade-offs. They are everywhere. Everything in software architecture is a trade-off. And so in the next lesson, we've got one more aspect and that's developing good soft skills. And we'll see that in lesson 91, but for some references, of course, the Fundamentals of Software Architecture book that Neil Ford and I wrote, has a lot of analysis about trade-offs. And so we cover trade-offs all through that book. As a matter of fact, I do have two classes that I teach. One's a workshop and one's actually a two-day um, class. These are both virtual classes. Um, choosing the right architecture is filled with nothing but trade-off analysis. <laughs> I referenced this in the last lesson where I talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly about each kind of architecture style, but namely here, uh, we focus on 
really the trade-offs of when you should use it and when you should not use it and what are they good and bad at. As a matter of fact, on the Software Architecture Fundamentals class, which closely matches the book, um, we dive into trade-offs as well there. Um, also, uh, don't forget, every last Friday of the month at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Neil Ford and I are opening up a free Q&A session where we start talking about a different aspect of architecture and kind of open it up for a, a questions for 30 minutes. And we call this Foundations Friday Forum, and you can actually get uh, more information and actually register by going to the link over there. So. Anyways, um, this has been Software Architecture Monday, lesson number 90, Becoming a Software Architect, part five. Um, everyone, we have one more lesson in this roadmap of becoming a software architect, lesson 91, part six, which will be next Monday. I'm doing these in a weekly cadence just because they're all kind of tied together and I really didn't want to have to, all of you to have to wait two weeks. <laughs> so anyways, stay safe, everyone, and thank you so much for listening.